Hello everyone, thanks for jumping in on the Let's Look Brad channel. So this here, I got two boxes of nickels. Um, it's been a long time since I've actually been to these two banks. Uh, so I had to go pick up Hogwarts Legacy to play tonight. So anyhow, I swung by two banks that were down south. Uh, yeah, like I said, either 100 bucks, 100 bucks. I was going to get two boxes at the first bank, but it was kind of funny. We, we bickered back and forth. They said, we have three boxes if you want those. And I was like, well, I definitely want a box. And then it was two uh, cashiers, I guess, come over and then the manager. And uh, I told them, just go ahead and give me one box. Of mine. Don't want to make it a big ordeal. Let's see, anything on top? Nope, really grungy one. It's just got a bunch of oil on it. So a lot of decently older coins. So, okay, bring you in when I find something. I was trying to get a handful of finds in before I actually bring y'all in. So it's 36 rolls left in the box there. So um, what I'm doing is I'm pulling aside the 40s and 50 finds and the foreigns for sure. Um, if I find silver, I pull that aside also. But we've got, let's say a 1940 Philly, a 1941, I think it's a, yeah, that's a Philly. This one's a San Francisco, so 1941S. Yep, uh, 46, a 54, and a 58, but we also got the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, 2005, and this is a five cent also. So I got a foreign, I got quite a few more than the, I got three out of that last roll, so you know, I wanna bring you in for a handful of rolls, so I'll do it the next couple of times, but after I get about three rows of, you know, a handful of finds, I'll just go ahead and run through quite a few and then bring you back in whenever I, um, got a good silver or some of them. Well, we're on the last roll of the box, actually. So I did have these six finds here and then added another three finds to the board. Um, so I already called out this first row, but a lot of 40s finds, another 46 there, 41, 46, 51, 54, and then a couple of 59s. The very last roll, I didn't see it. And it's literally the last, second to the last coin. There's the silver. Got a deep man mark on the top of the Monticello there. That's going to be 1945. So we did get silver out of the box, but as I mentioned, I couldn't see it on the edge. It looks like some of the rougher looking colorations like that. But yeah, just definitely didn't see it on the edge. But that's going to be a Denver Mint 35% silver. 1945. Sit that one up there. And 92. Don't need that one. So I'm going to go ahead and check the 2022s. Uh, we'll just check this one coin that I have here and then jump on into the second box. Okay, I took a little break from the hunting and stuff like that. I looked at the 2022s. See if we can get this one popped open. That's one thing I haven't had in a while is a silver ender or a buffalo ender. I have had probably a handful of silver enders and only one buffalo ender but you never know you never know looks like this wraps a little messed up on that one actually it's across both of the rolls there it was kind of funny uh that one looks either like a really rough greaser but nothing on top showing but as always, like I said, look for the silver. We're gonna look for the 2005 Philadelphia Speared Buffalo for sure. That 75 high D. Uh, a lot of die clashes, 2022, 2021 quarter, or, uh, nickels that are gonna have some errors on there. Always looking for the 70 D with the full stairs. Anything between 73 and below full stairs would be nice and fine. Uh, I do have the 74 and above full stairs, but let's go ahead and get into this first roll here and I'll bring you back in when I get something. This is going to be in the first roll here, actually. So this 1975, I've seen quite a few of these, honestly, and I haven't pulled them out. You see the damage that's up here? Now, it, you see it's across his forehead also. It's on the edge of the coin. Now, the thing is, it's not crimped very, actually, it's not crimped it all across the edge of the coin but it's pinned over on the back side too but if you look right there also to the right of it the excess metal is actually peeled back and laid over so i'm not sure what that is like i said i've seen some actually on websites being sold you see that 
it's almost like the machine when it cut out it actually took the metal and laid it over on top of the coin here where you got the little tender end that goes around so basically from where the tip is let me get it better where the tip is all the way back to the edge of the coin was laid over here kind of interesting like i say i've come across two of these this would be the second one actually let's just take a gander at the coin itself i don't see much on there let's see if i can get it focused a smidge more a little darker yeah all right Nothing really across there. Actually, what is that? Oh, that's just the ER. Just all smooshed together. Nothing on this end. Nothing on the Plurbus Unum. All right, well, let's go back to the obverse now. So this is the cut in the obverse. And it looks like the metal is laid over. It's just literally dug in and laid over. And if you look... See where this is other gas is at. Yeah, that's it. That's actually so it looks like it's dug in here and the metal is laid over on top of his head up here. It's all embedded onto the nickel. Let's see if there's anything else going on with this. Maybe a little lamination there and there. Nothing really there. 75. I mean I don't know. I'd have to pull another 75 and see, but does a seven actually peak down here like i said i'll have to dig out another one here in a second and i'll bring it up and check but uh yeah so anyhow if any of y'all know what that is let me know um i want to say that's actually a, a mint error and like i say all the metal is laid over the excess metal is laid over onto the side on this and the reverse so that's kind of interesting kind of interesting anyhow just let me know like I said, I've taken a gander on, on several of them I've picked up, but uh, I really haven't held on to them because I'm thinking it's just pliers. But yet again, when you do that, you're only making an imprint and not the metal being moved over to the side. So quite interesting there. Just let me know. Well, I think it's the fourth roll actually I was working on. This one here looks like a crimper. So the edges is actually smooshed in a little bit, but it almost looks like it's melted back. If I get in better light there, looks like it's almost melted back kind of, but it looks like a crimper to me. That's what it did the rim damage, and it's also on the reverse. A little interesting, like I say, this is probably just somebody doing damage to a coin, but yet again, it's possibility that I was actually done by the uh, don't know because usually if you take and crimp the coin in basically you should see something of the well that's going to be a D so that's going to be barely grazing that not for sure actually it had to be from the mint then give us there's the O in the inside of that. So if you'd have taken anything and crimped that, it would basically just flatten it out. Makes it makes it look like the bare flatness of the coin across there. But the O's coming through there. Hmm. It's a bit interesting. And it's the same thing here as it was on the other coin there. You see, you got this little bitty ridge line, not the bottom line, the dead center line there, the center of it. Now, if you swap back over to this one here, I think it was on the reverse. It's got, there's actually the first section here and then the second section here. So it's, it's almost like it was laid across there and smushed or scraped or something like that. I'm not for sure. Uh... Like I said, I'm not for sure. I don't want to throw them back in the bag. These are the ones that I usually hold on to, even though it's completely annihilated. Like there was something happened there. Mm. Like I said, these are just informational pieces, basically. So whenever I see one, and it's only five cents. So whenever I see one that's on hmm, online or somebody's selling it or something goes on with it, like, 
and then I'll double check my coins and the ones that I have. But that's kind of interesting. Like I say, that's actually the metal here from that secondary cut in is actually slid back and it's on top. So I know for sure this has got to be something from the mint then. Peculiar, very peculiar. Something to bring y'all, something to talk, uh, you know, a good talking point. And I mean, it's not, yeah, I'm not for sure. Anyhow, that's interesting. Just something to think about though. Like I say, just mention to me or leave me a comment on what you think this is actually. Just in for an update, you got five rolls left in here. So I did add, as you see, another seven more. So three, six, seven, eight, nine right here. So we did get a couple more 40s. And then actually, I haven't seen one in a while. This is a 1951 S, San Francisco. I don't have, I think I have one other. I don't usually get a lot of 51 S's. So that's kind of nice to have that one popped in there. As you see, 53, 58s, there's 59s there, and then a couple more 50s. Um, I did pull aside this 1970 because my heart was racing when I flipped it over. Look at that 1970, Denver. And when I flipped it over, I was like, is there stairs on there? And uh, it's a couple. They're kind of beat up, uh, but it's definitely not a full stair, but a really nice 1970. So I pulled it off to the side. Now this buffalo here, if you look back over here against the D and the E, looks like you got something on there between that D and the E. I want to say that's kind of like a strike through. Could be wrong. It's actually some excess metal that's up on it because it actually lipped the E up some and also lipped the D up there. Actually, it split the D and then it basically just molded the D a little further out to where it was supposed to be. So I want to say that's kind of a strike through. And then also you bring it up here and it's the same thing. It's coming off of that T there going up on top of the buffalo. And then maybe a little bit more metal here stacked up. There's actually something down on the bottom here too. Maybe it's just a scratch on there. But a little off-putting, a little something to take a gander at like so you can see it right there that d between the e going up on the back side i wouldn't call it this beard buffalo but it, it is a philadelphia so quite possible um and then the ex extra buffaloes are pulled off to the side there what is this one this is actually pretty cool this is a 1983 this is a heavy grease strike looks like sunshine rays all around the head the P and you fluff it over. I want to say it's got the ring of death around here, but it's definitely a grease strike through or a grease, greaser error. Flip it to the front and show you this. Heavy. Come back over here in 1983. It's just blotched all to the side there. Come over here and spin a little bit in God We Trust. Kind of blotchy. Real blotchy. So yeah, definitely a greaser. Nicer, nicer one there. So I'm going to hold it out too also. Anyhow, find more rolls to run through. That will do it for the second box. So I'm going to go ahead and run through everything that I've got stacked up here. I did add a few more years to it. It's a 1940, you can barely see. It's a type 1 for the 42 because that would have been silver. But it's a Philly, so... That's the type one. And then also, same thing. No, wait. Yeah, no. So 1958 also was added to there. Anyhow, I've got a lot to look for for varieties. Let me go ahead and check everything out. I'll bring it back in for a wrap up. All right, we had a pretty good selection of years stacked up. So we got the 40s, 41, 42. So 42, as I mentioned, was going to be the year it goes. It's a type one, 42. And then a type two, 42 is silver. And it rolls over to the type one and two silver 46 also. So these are all the later. Uh, so these aren't silver. This isn't silver. So I say in between 42 and 46 is going to be the silver. So you got the 51. Another, I don't know why I double stacked them. 51 Philly, 51 San Francisco. Put that up there. 53, 54s, 56s, bunch of 58s, and quite a few of the 59s. 
So we did get those dual clipped coins. That one's actually pretty cool. That one's questionable. 1970D's really nice. The foreign, the greaser, the 1983 Philly, and then the possible strike error through there. We did get that one silver coin. Now I do have a 1954 pulled to a side. 1954S, and it will be either an S over S or a DDR, and I think it is. This one's hard to tell because of all the grease struck through. You see the, uh, it's weak on all the lettering around, but you can definitely tell it's, uh, let me grab hold of it. Some uh, greasing, like I said, really light on it, but that S is kind of odd. It's got a lot of feeling going on in the inside of it, so I'm not for sure about it, but it again, 1954S. It's in not that good a condition. It's something to look at, but it is a talking point whenever I go to the coin shop to let them look at it and give way in on their opinion for it. Anyhow, like I mentioned, let me know what y'all think about the clip coin here. And uh, please give me a thumbs up and y'all have a great day.